Bye. Thanks for coming. Hey, girl. Thanks for coming. Oh, grrr. Well, hello, and thanks for coming, everybody. My name is Seth. What's yours? Hello, Jamal is here. Hi, Stoney's here as well. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, hey, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back, back, back to another fun note episode of Thanks for Coming, the most magically gay podcast there ever was. We have Jamal back. We're back in town, and what the fuck? There's snow here, too. Yeah. You it, you brought the snow with you, girl. I must have. I really didn't mean to because there was it was so weird already back home because it was November and there was no snow until like my last day and it snowed seriously <laughs> like over two feet. It you had to have the full experience, you know? Oh yeah. I'll have to post pictures on the TFC account. Like the snow was ridiculous. It's all things we're used to, but it's just like, oh come on, the last day I hope I can get to the airport. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I was looking forward to no more snow here, but of course it's it wasn't a heavy dump, just enough to be annoying. Yeah, just enough to give you PTSD. Yes, that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, um, we are, of course, excited to get into another week of Drag Race content. We do not have any hot topics this week, so why don't we go ahead and get into our Honest Tea Spills of the Week. Oh, she's spilling. Uh, Honest Tea. Hey everybody, welcome back to our Honest Tea Spill of the Week, where we are, of course, back, back, back again to bring you full coverage of everything going down in the world of drag. Ooh, lots going on. I feel like I've been playing, like, heavy catch-up. I still Mm. haven't seen, like, certain parts of past episodes, but I'm all caught up and ready for this week. I know. You heard that... You heard it here first. Jamal's a fake fan, everybody. Uh Uh-uh. It was a whirlwind tour I was on. I was like four hours behind. I I was all like (laughs) crashy and loopy and other things. (laughs) I was on vacation. Yeah, that. I watched like 95%. Leave me alone. What what, what 5% did you not watch? I didn't watch uh, last week's Dragula yet or uh, last week's Canada yet. Oh, okay. So I guess you kind of know the spoilers yeah. of like people getting kicked off and stuff. So. Oh, yeah. I did my studies. I looked at my timelines. Thank okay. you, Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Well, speaking of Dragula, why don't we go ahead and get into this week's episode? Uh, we are on episode four, and this week is the Monsters of Rock Challenge, which is one that I, uh, as well as the Boulay Brothers, really enjoy. This is a fun category and theme. Like, of course, it's um in the culture. It's more than like um what we would call like a theme. You know, it's really part of the different aspects of the spooky ooky drag scene. And I was excited to see all of this. Yeah, I kn- I guess I didn't know. Like, I still don't know all the like Dragula. Like, what the popular episodes are. So it's kind of cool, like seeing it. And I kind of want to go back now and like see what the other seasons looked like yeah yeah you gotta they, they, this is one of the challenges they do every season so you gotta go back yes, oh yeah girl and we know it's one of their favorites yes yes it is so in this week uh there was no um little mini challenge of sorts because we are getting right into the uh floor show which would be you know of course the monsters of rock and um and this week, we are dividing the girls into two teams of four, and the Boulets will be doing that to piss off as many of the contestants <laughs> as possible. <laughs> and the oh. viewers. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, the viewers. I'm still learning, like, the Dragula fans, so I'm not going to, like, comment on them yet, but oh my gosh, the cast definitely ruffled feathers. <laughs> yeah, they are really milking it on Twitter. Oh, yeah. I yes, mean, girl. yeah, we'll get into it. I don't want to like. So we have um, <laughs> what band? The, the first band we have is Zenith with a uh, team leader, s- supposedly team leader Dali. <laughs> We're not sure if she's the team leader or not, or just the vocalist. But um, yes, uh, she is also with Hosotera Toma, La Zavaleta, and Saint. Mm-hmm. And uh, then we have on the other band Glam Rot. And on this team, we have Sigourney Beaver, also 
um, the supposed um, uh, supposed leader of this ba- of this band. We're not really sure. Uh, <laughs> Bitter Betty, Jade Jolie, and Mary Cherry. Oh, I just have so many thoughts about all of this. <laughs> Is it like are they the band leader? Are they the group leader? Are they just like the the le- the vocalist? They're supposed to be the leader. Like, I mean, honestly, if I were the leader and I wanted to be the bassist, I would have done that. Like, you don't necessarily have... You don't have to be the vocalist to be the front person, necessarily. You know, if you're a true fan of music, I mean, there's the vocalist. But there's other people in the group who can show up and show out, too. So um, I feel like they just kind of lost their way when they got caught up in some of the drama that happened behind the scenes. Because it's like, this is the team leader picked by the Belays let it be and let's focus on winning right like that's what any adult would do like any 38 (laughs) year old adult participating in this competition yes yes i would hope so i would hope so yeah so um of course uh team zenith got along very well and they just kind of you know got their outfits together they got their choreography down and uh, everyone was working pretty well as a team on Team Glamrot, however, Mary Cherry fought everybody, and <laughs> um, especially Sigourney, because supposedly she's quote unquote fake for having supposedly no tears on episode two or whatever, episode one, whenever Mary Cherry decided that she does not like Sigourney. They really need to like leave Homegirl alone. Like <laughs> she's ser- she's serving sickening drag and. I think she's just there trying to be part of the experience. A lot of people like Mary are annoyed with people like Sigourney because it's just like, I don't know. They want more out of them. Like they're too, I don't even know what word to use. It's not what they're looking to be served. And it's like, yo, learn, learn people for who they are and then try to move forward instead of trying to bully people into your ideas or just wanting to fight with them to make sloppy TV, I guess. I'm but reaching. Also, but also, too, it feels like Mary just sees Sigourney, like, not bothered and succeeding. Yes. And Mary is just, like, always stressed out and doing horrible. So I think sh- I think she's, you know, Mary is playing the game and projecting. I know. Like, that's my thing with Mary is, like, she wants to just, like, go after Sigourney for all these things that supposedly Sigourney has done. And it's like, but she's just, like, there. And, like, you're accusing her of playing a game and doing all this shit. And it's like, you're just so over the top. Like, I was Mm -hmm. so over her this episode, which I've been over her for a while. But this was just, like, the nail in the coffin, basically. You know, which sucks because she started the season this way, kind of. Like, we're we're always willing to give people a chance on this show. And it's just like, ugh, we just want them to do better. And it's, so far, it's just not turning out. And honestly, like we'll get to it here, but like the way that like others in the competition were like defending Mary just like pissed me off. Even Enablers. More. Like, Enablers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not the leader's fault. If your team is a bunch of fucking babies, you know, I used to supervise and manage in a corporate space and people are going to be childish. If they're fucking childish, they're going to have an attitude problem. If they have an attitude problem, leaders can harness as much as they can but at the end of the day we're still supposed to be working with grown adults like seth touched on earlier yeah like this is not mature adult behavior uh for a 38 year old right so i mean we're you're almost to your midlife crisis girl like (laughs) get get it together seth said calm down you need some energy for later believe me all right yeah (laughs) Can someone get her some menopause real quick? Like, we just need to calm this lady down. (laughs) So, yeah, I guess, uh, really, I mean, the majority of this is just them sewing outfits. And Mary Cherry did not even have an outfit. So Sigourney (sighs) had to make her one. Listen. Because Mary Cherry doesn't. So. How are you going to be this way and not come prepared? I know. And. Also, like, why are you, like, so rude to her when she's making you something? Like, Right. <laughs> she was like, they were like, oh, it took you so long. It should have only taken you a couple hours to make it. And it's like, I don't know. Maybe she's trying to make sure she herself is sorted out before making your shitty dress. And yeah, also, like, that's if right. she's making you something, don't fucking criticize her for taking 
a long time when she's just trying to make sure that it looks good. So they, as a team, look good for the competition Mm -hmm. and then they want to accuse her of being selfish and it's like bitch she's trying to make sure everyone on the team looks good like this is so dumb i'm so like over it (laughs) and then they were also mad because she went to go hang out with the other team like the second day of like of their work time so i'm like yeah you guys were being assholes why would she want to hang out with you right and that's also where they saw her alone tweaking everybody's outfit so you know two sides to every story but the cameras do tell hunty yes girl i don't know this is just such a wild one and and actually also at the beginning of the episode it's weird because at the beginning of the episode mary cherry pulls jade to the side to um get more screen time and <laughs> then like they have a conversation about how jay needs to be like more like loud louder i guess and then like by the end of this episode uh jade like turns on mary (laughs) well yeah because she's getting pissed she's like look i'm not loud like you let me find my version of loud and be that like you we just had this oprah talk five minutes ago and now you want me to just be it already like girl go catch your wig but also like this is like the cameron michael sort of situation it's like why does she have to be loud that's not part of the competition true yes nice recall I don't know, girl. But yeah, I thought it was kind of funny, though. Like, also, like, one of the supposed things that happened was Jade came to Mary and said that uh, Jade and um, and Sigourney were planning on playing victim to, like, sell, like, Mary and Bitter Betty under the bus, like, at the on the floor. <laughs> and I was like, why would she come tell y'all that? Why would she tell you that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The enablement is just like disappointing. That that orbit around yeah. Mary is just like, uh, do better, y'all. Do better. Yeah. I don't know. It's just hard to believe anything Mary Cherry says or um, Sarah Andrews. Because I'm just like, <laughs> you guys are just drama like shit starters. Like, why? How am I supposed to believe you? It's not right. a good look. I totally agree. And it's just like, I don't know. It annoyed me whenever. Like everyone was saying, Mary should go home, and then like she just start started crying, and I'm like, yeah, she tried to play the victim. <laughs> yeah, talk. Yeah, took the words out of my mouth. Talk about victimhood. Look at this. Yeah, I was like, I don't feel. I I was like, I should be feeling bad for Mary, but then I was like, wait, I just don't give a fuck. Yeah. Well, and part of me does like deep down because it's like, okay, we all take our own time to work through our shit, but then I'm like, listen, we got to learn at some point, and you're you knew what was gonna happen when you came on the show. Yeah. And interacted with other personalities. Surely you didn't think you were going to bulldoze all these these people. Especially right. not the judges. Because the judges are going to like who they like across these drag shows. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know, girl. This was, sh- this was wild. I guess we could also talk about our uh, guest judges. Um, <gasps> yes, yes. Internet uh, bearded lady, Poppy. <laughs> slightly slightly familiar with poppy i couldn't name like a song but i have heard two or three i don't know she act all i know about poppy is she acted weird on youtube for attention and then somehow she spiraled that into a music career <laughs> <laughs> that's the internet for you this she must be like some like new age hot topic band i don't know <laughs> <laughs> educate us twitter and instagram let us know yeah but also, we have the incredibly cool <gasps> Rachel True. Uh, I stand the craft, the only black girl in the cast. So naturally, back in the day, I connected with this movie for that reason. But talented, talented actress on so many levels and other shows and movies. And I have her tarot deck. Her book is amazing. <laughs> Can you tell? I'm a fan. I liked how she sassed everybody. I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She's good at the sweet and sour. Yes, girl. Um, all right. So, you know, at the end of this uh, competition, Team Zenith, of course, won. So they were all safe. But the queen that did the best was finally Dali. Well deserved, I thought. I thought she guided her team. They guided their team well and that they deserve the win. Absolutely. Yeah, I loved it. It was great to see Dali finally get their win. And uh, then, of course, you know, that means the other team, Glamrot, is in the bottom, all four of them. And oh, all yeah. four of her extermination. Yep. And the twist of the knife, the twist of the knife was Sigourney getting high praise from the Boulets. Yeah, because she does well. Yeah. Like she said, like the Boulets were like, if you had been 
on a, another team, like you would have won, or yep. if your team had won, you would have been the winner or something. Yeah, that's I mean, exactly. She was what the standout said. on the team. Like she clearly has a talent above everyone else on that team. Yeah, <laughs> right. she's a contender. <laughs> the sooner they realize it, the sooner I think everybody will loosen up and really have fun. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, like you know, bit, uh, bitter Betty was kind of. Um, I think Stony brought this up earlier. Was kind of like in the cauldron uh room then bitter betty slash sarah andrews was uh sticking up for (laughs) mary cherry i mean this is like the part of like both side ism that i hate like i feel like bitter betty was just like trying to be like because okay we need somebody on mary cherry's side Uh and it's just like okay but do we really though because like mary cherry was acting like a complete brat this entire season season and then this episode From she jump. really came out and now we're mm-hmm. going to almost like gaslight like sigourney yes. for like oh my gosh, doing a good read. job and it's like good yes. lord like sh- like can somebody help this woman because like she <laughs> was like verbally abused like an entire like episode <laughs> and a whole fucking season by mary cherry and now right. we're going to be like but like you should have communicated better and it's like fuck off mary like fuck yeah. off bitter betty fuck uh whoever else it was i don't remember somebody she, else was coming she didn't get a chance to lead like jay jolie said yeah. she didn't get a chance to lead so how is she supposed so, to communicate fuck you mary right. cherry you're the worst part of the season ooh, 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 and ooh. i'm glad you're gone you're the worst part of any <laughs> drag race franchise <laughs> oh no oh god <laughs> see the best part about it is because oh. no, i was getting like after the episode, I was getting really Ouch. heated, and so I'm like, "Let me go, you know, see the Twitter <laughs> dramas about this or whatever." And I'm like, uh, "Mary, I went to Mary Cherry's t- Twitter, and we have more followers followers than her." Oh no! And no, see, she gets this this is a sad no interaction. Part. I hope that she like turns around because we know how the internet can be. We're not trying to sick any bullies out, you know. Obviously, no, I'm don't not going send after hate. Her to the queens but yeah as adults you reach a point in your life where you have to realize you know the common denominator is me and how you deal with that is totally on you nobody else right yeah i i I don't follow mary i was not adding to the uh hate sent to her i did not tag the queens i don't do any of that you know i just express my opinions and for our people that watch or whoever is interested that follows us that's right but um but yeah, so I was just like, and she would get like maybe like six likes, like a, a tweet or something. And I was like, and then I went over to Sigourney and Sigourney and oh, keep in mind, Mary Cherry's been doing drag for 10 years. This is what she has to show for herself. And then we go over to Sigourney and Sigourney <laughs> had like three times her subs- her followers. Like all of her tweets had like hundreds of likes and lots of interaction. And well, I'm like, girl. Yeah. And it's like, you know we're we're kids of dial up and aol i'm um so okay with like people not tracking how many people like and retweet and do all that nonsense impressions whatever social media behind the scenes word other influencers know and podcasters know (laughs) but um you know we these are things that mary can change so we're not out here trying to feel sorry for her or to bash her these are all things that people can change these numbers that are going to like, you know, paint today's picture of success or, yeah. you know, even help you on your journey to working on those numbers, build your character more. It's going to open up more doors for you on a business sense. Like there's only up from here, Mary. So let's right. see what you can do, Queen. Right. And then, of course, I had to go look after this at Sarah, Sarah Andrews profile. She just switched her name, by the way, from Sarah Andrews to Bitter Betty and kept the same Twitter with the same amount of followers that she's had over however long she's had her account. And she and she still only has like about the same as Sigourney. Well, you know, karma in the universe works fabulously. I just let them do their thing these days. Right. And I and I think that Sarah went to go like be went to bat for um Mary is because uh sarah andrew she just has to be like the odd one out that's always being attacked like on whether it's on twitter in real life like she always has to lash out to defend herself hmm. i I'm don't bored. know i'm bored bitch yeah, yeah. time yeah. to move on my tea is cold <laughs> yeah but anyways Ugh. uh then of course you know the bottom four they go into the extermination where they were all be shocked fuck They're, this if, game yeah 
shock therapy girl um (laughs) and they all got to pick who gets the most shocks too which was interesting yeah it was hard to like track because i'm sure it was like editing because they're trying to catch like the best of people's reactions and various range of um various like ranges of emotions and whatnot so yeah you can't really tell who's getting the most clicks and because to me it kind of looked like mary was just chilling but i know in right you know in real time that's probably wasn't the case yeah i wish they would have had some graphic to be like these many this is how many votes each person got or whatever Ooh, like yeah. a glowing line or something i mean like, i already knew who yeah. was going home because now that i know that the boulet brothers do the the, the clues. clues at the beginning of the episode that's so fun i un- i connected the dots with the slipping all the time or like you know the, how the the stripper slipped and oh, they yeah. killed him and then i was like okay well mary cherry keeps slipping and like doing all these like terror like bad things on the run performance or the, yeah yo death by thighs though sign me up yeah crush Sounds my head interesting. crush my head daddy <laughs> yes <laughs> take me out <laughs> Oh, yeah. So bye, Mary Cherry. Hopefully the season gets better now. Yeah, it will. It'll be much quieter. (laughs) Yes, girl. Let's move on to Canada's Drag Race. And this is episode five called Bye Flop, where the queens will have to write, record, perform an original pop country breakup bop with special guest Canada pop sensation Biff Naked. Biff Naked. What a name. Picture that on a building. Yes, girl. Biff no. Naked. I feel like we can verb that. I've Biff Naked you. Uh, oh my gosh. There it is. This season had so much promise, girl. Stoney's <laughs> 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 like, I don't have time today. <laughs> we'll get we'll get through this one fast. Uh, so in the mini challenge, the girls have to pair up to get into quick drag to give a lesson on safe sex. Um, I thought this was all pretty dumb across the board. This was kind of wild. Like I did laugh at some of the shit. Maybe it was because I was slightly stoned and there was like a banana costume putting a real life condom on its head. Um, um <laughs> It could be a fun challenge, right? But some of these, I don't know. I feel like maybe it's drag race burnout or maybe it's just like, uh, we could be in a room and create more fun things than this. And also, what happened to the concept of a mini challenge? Because I feel like this, I I mean, I asked Jamal, I was like, is this the maxi challenge? (laughs) It did go on for a while. Yeah, I'm like, they need to like cut it down a little bit. Like, let's go back to like mini challenges where, I don't know, we just like grab something with her like bob for apples or something like i don't know we don't need to do a whole like fucking production or the dance right. circle like go put them um bring back the twerking babies shit yeah. i would take that you know yeah yeah there you go so the mini challenge winners uh are geometric and cynthia kiss so they get to uh you know pick their own teams for the maxi challenge they're separated uh-huh. and uh they get to pick their own teams so uh G- we have the giddy girls which are adriana geometric isis couture and pythia and then we have the dosi hoes which are eve 6000 kindle gender <laughs> kimora amor and cynthia kiss uh pythia for universal drag race president i'm so into them yeah me too i like everything that pythia does yeah so into it yeah and actually also you know the while the mini challenge was was a flop maybe that's why the song was called by flop because the mini (laughs) challenge was a flop i'm sorry like (laughs) y'all know i'm pretty easy you know to please i was not connecting to this no this sucked this Uh, i liked it oh no really i hated the challenge like I don't know. I did not like the song. I wasn't feeling it. Maybe I was having a bad day or something, but I just like Bye, I was so flop. Like, over what the f- this Girl. whole like episode, and then like oh yeah. So well, I, I I really well I enjoyed it. I agree that the um that the Giddy Girls did win. I liked mm-hmm. their performance. The second one, I was like, man, these it just seemed like they were all struggling. Yeah, they just like uh it was it wasn't even like a everyone was trying to be their own person thing it was just kind of like they're they were just up there going through the motions kind of and but but it's also really not their fault because like eve and uh kimura were both like 
this is we don't dance like this is like kind of hard for us and then kendall and cynthia are like well we don't care and then like <laughs> j- we want to do this stuff and so that's why it failed because it wasn't really eve or or kimura's fault it was because yes. there was no teamwork yes queens that's leadership 101 you are only as strong as your weakest player i'm sure you've heard it before it applies <laughs> most places yes girl so uh, the the winner this week is Geometric. You know, good job, Geometric. You know, she works. And the Oscar speech was edited to be a few seconds. So, thankfully, <laughs> and, yeah. And Brooklyn shaded her for it. So I love that that's a thing. <laughs> I, I yeah. do. I do love that where Brooklyn's just like, and now the editors are just like. <laughs> playing the oscar music as she speaks <laughs> maybe it's like a, a um tactic by geometric she's like if i'm like this way they have no choice but to like i don't not know what to do with me i don't think it's a tactic yeah. i think she's i think that she thinks she's more important than what she really is oh no oh. <laughs> i don't think it's a tactic either i think she's just like a performance person and she yeah. just lives in that yeah. artist headspace she's a theater kid probably mm-hmm. and just thinks she's like super like she's a creative you know <laughs> yeah i don't know it was pretty wild but i like i like how it was edited. Stoney's face i did too yeah uh the bottom two um are Eve 6000 and Cynthia Kiss because they got fucked over by the rest of their team. Yeah, that sucks. And then, um, you know, Eve just suffers from resting bitch face. I hate when that's turned on people. That happens to me all the time. (laughs) All the time! The thing is with Eve, like, she does look kind of like she's just, like, bored out of her goddamn mind when she's on the runway and, like, doing performances, but that's why I love her, because she's just like, (laughs) I'm here, bitch. It's like a Mariah Carey vibe in a way, like, you know, like, singing at New Year's Eve and just being like... (laughs) I guess I'm going over there. <laughs> I don't know. I, I like, I've really enjoyed Eve 6000 over this uh, whole season. As you all know, she grew and, on me. I did like her. Yeah. I mean, she's really funny. And I, and I liked it untucked too. how they were like, asked, they asked her like how she's feeling. And then when she said it, they were like, well, blah, well, blah, 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 blah. Like, why are you being like this? And then she's like, "You, a- I'm not being like that. You just asked me to talk about it, and I'm talking about it. Yeah, right. I'm like, <laughs> shut the fuck up. I, I was so like, agree. Fuck, yes. I was like, I was so happy she stood up for herself because, like, I could so relate to Eve in that situation because people would be like, how are you feeling? And then you tell them, and you're oh like, my gosh, oh, why are you being so negative or something? It's like, I'm not being negative. I'm just telling you what happened in my point of view. I'm answering right. your question. Yeah. I don't know. I think Eve was like the best thing about this season. Like to me, Eve and Beth. And, even Beth, <laughs> like that was the high note of Canada's Drag Race. They like a spinoff. Whenever Eve went home at the end, like I told Jamal, I was like, the season's over. He did. Like, yeah. <laughs> it ended, and he stood up and walked away, and he was like, the season's over, and he like, like I kind of don't downstairs. care. <laughs> yeah, I kind of don't care. Like at this point, now that Eve's gone, my next like favorite person would be pythia so i'm like i guess i'll keep watching and rooting for pythia i don't know i know because i here's the thing it's gonna be like the top six or whatever or top five and we got geometric kindle and like Cynthia kiss and i'm just like adriana isis i know i'm like yeah, they'll get rid of like, isis and then adriana. Season, like not really this is so cool <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> they uh these two Eve six thousand and Cynthia Kiss do lip sync to Biff Naked song I Love Myself Today. And actually I hadn't heard the song before, but I really liked it. You know, I was bopping to it. Yeah, I yeah, enjoyed this it. was good. Yes. Uh and this week uh the queen that was eliminated is Eve six thousand and I am one hundred percent blaming it on the edit. Bye, Eve. Super sad yeah. you're gone. Yes, girl. It just won't be the same without you. You're the best part about the season. It should have been like the Eve and Beth show all season, but whatever. I will just watch these hoes tear each other's lashes out. They should just do like oh. a YouTube channel together. Like maybe yes. they can be like the new Katya and Trixie. I'm here for that. Yeah, I was literally about to say, uh, Eve, if somehow you listen to our podcast, please team up with Beth. You two are gold. We should try Air to get up. them on the show. No. And, and make a show. Yes. We should like try to get them on the perfect. show. I love them. Oh, my gosh. Me too. We can birth it. Oh, my gosh. Yes. 
We thought of it here, so also copyright it though, so you have to pay us a percentage. Yep. We're messaging the queens after we're done recording, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, why don't we go ahead and just take a quick little break and we can message them right now. Ooh. Uh, okay. <laughs> Be right back, y'all. You've got mail. Hi, queens. Oh my gosh, we're on break. Thanks for coming. This is the part of the show where we refill our drinks and you get time to leave us a review. It lets us know how we are doing and lets more Drag Race fans sashay our way. You could also tip us while you're listening to the show like you would tip a root girl at their show. You can Venmo us at TFC Pod or on Cash App to dollar sign TFC Pod to thank us for all the hard work that goes into making a show like this. Oh my gosh, we better get back to the show. I've got my drink and I am ready to untuck, Mary. Let's get back into the Interior Illusions Lounge and record the rest of the podcast. So tell me why you're out here in a bathing suit with no corset and a belt. Shut up, Michelle. Oh, and by the way, you're not my real dad and you never will be. Anyways, back to the show. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to our Honest Tea Spill of the Week. We are, of course, back, back, back again to bring you full coverage of everything going on in the world of drag. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move on and discuss this last week's episode of RuPaul's Drag Race UK. Uh, we are in season or uh, episode eight now, and this was called Bra Wars. Uh, <laughs> so basically, <laughs> this week, the queens will be testing their acting skills as they will be overacting in the uh, new sci-fi blockbuster, Bra Wars, The Vampire Claps <laughs> Back. And uh, it was, it happened. Yep. The Vampire <laughs> clap back oh my gosh this, this <laughs> like and thank god for rue even like calling out that it was i don't know she said mediocre script i don't know if she I was would right give yeah. it that much praise she I said no probably... shade but that was all shade all tea <laughs> yeah she's just like admitting it now she's like i do not want to be held responsible for this you know the emmy judges and hosts don't they can't read like the real drag shade so they won't understand yeah they won't get it (laughs) (laughs) oh my gosh well in this week's episode um there was uh there was no maxi challenge or i'm sorry no mini challenge the maxi challenge was to um you know do this uh overacting and they had a god i don't even know what to say but like i I just didn't i don't know i i personally don't want to get too into it because i just did not like the scene i don't this whole thing i thought it was boring it's really hard sometimes because there we're getting so many of these like acting challenges. Not only are they more like popular, like I do miss like the old drag race where it was just mainly, you know, these queens are creating looks. They're yeah. we're seeing what the queens are doing if they're like out working in the bars, like sure these performance and acting challenges gets them ready for like commercials and shit, but I mean, there's people to train regular people like you and I and drag queens for opportunities like this. Right. But I'm just like, gosh, I'm like you, it's hard to enjoy because it's like, uh, this just wasn't like funny to me. It had funny moments. Don't get me wrong. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. But it was like, Oh, a funny moment here. Oh, a funny moment there. And then it's over. And there, there were lots of references to past like UK seasons. They did like a breakup bye bye reference and a UK Uh hun reference yeah and i mean kitty is just always a joy to watch yeah this was like uh last season's eastenders parody show where they have all the references in the acting challenge yeah yes so i don't know Mm -hmm. it was i mean i thought that uh crystal looked good as um c3 p ho and (laughs) (laughs) i mean ella was very outgoing and ella uh, was funny to me i did enjoy ella yeah, and and at Kitty too. Kitty was really good, and then mm-hmm. poor uh, poor Vanity had to just stick her head through a box and be blue. Dabba For real, dee, I, pr- die. I appreciate her taking that risk because you have to do a lot of face acting. But I mean, black people, it's not that hard. I mean, like, she painted her face well. Yeah, she painted well, and she was serving the expressions. I thought that she held her own. I thought yeah. she was funny. Yeah, I mean, again, it's based off of this like script that no one cares about but we're yeah. masters and eyebrows the blacks <laughs> i'm waiting for the baby yolo <laughs> spinoff series hey i'm i'm here for it yeah um so then let's see so then we get into the actual runway challenge which is themed as ste- scene stealers 
and these are um, interesting outfits. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, I think y'all are the most shady like this year. Y'all have been way shadier than me this entire year. It's really hard watching this show. I must be getting into heaven this year. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't count on it. Fuck. Okay. I'll keep trying. Maybe <laughs> next year, girl. <laughs> this was an interesting category. I um I I enjoyed the reference of kitties. I thought it was really pretty on her. Like the whole rose reference, I knew it immediately. Yeah. Um Ella was like really fun with the Oompa Loompa, just taking it outside of the box and like really I thought that was fun. Taking you there. Like I thought it was so well done. Yeah, girl. It was I when she was like starting to paint, like and you just saw her orange face, I was like, Oh my god, <laughs> is she gonna do an Oompa Loompa? <laughs> yep, same here. <laughs> And then um, uh, Vanity Milan was Halle Berry. Baps, yes. I got it immediately. Um, Yeah, I I love that movie. I I watch it here and there. I've watched Mm -hmm. it at least twice this year, for example. Yeah. It's a good movie. I got the reference, especially after Simone's season. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, that's right. But um, but yeah, I mean, I, I thought it was good. It was just a shame that she was wearing another orange dress and like, basically the same wig as last week but she added like yeah. that fascinator to make it the baps wig yeah vanji vibes with the red yeah yeah and uh who else did we not talk about oh we had crystal versace who did cruella de vil i thought it, this was pretty creative and she looked um very well polished i did gay gasp when i saw this but that's just because 101 dalmatians is one of my favorite movies growing up and oh my gosh this look was just everything and i don't want to sound like the judges like we know crystal can like serve a flawless look and she set the standard for herself but this was just so like cool and elegant to me just everything yes girl absolutely Uh, so um i get maybe i guess the looks were better than i remembered initially they were actually pretty good actually this week well Um, sometimes you just don't know what to expect with the category yeah. yeah So um, then the the winner of this week's challenge, well, actually, I guess let's go in order. Uh, you know, the bottom, the other three girls, um, or I'm sorry, the other two girls, Crystal and Vanity were safe. And so <gasps> everyone's like, oh, my gosh, is Ella and Kitty in the bottom, too? And then... <laughs> <laughs> Don't you come for the West Coast like that? Oh my God. Are they in the bottom too? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then it turns out they're actually the top two. And RuPaul's like, you two are going to sing because we need to fill up this lip sync time. So <laughs> they, so confusing like yeah. to me. Why did we do like double eliminations, all this, if we were going to just like have another non-elim week? Like, right. We could have had like Shariza May still here. Right. <laughs> and also, like, how's Vanity we were still here? Of that. She's yeah. been scraping by. I mean, I like Vanity. Don't get me wrong, listeners, but my goodness, she has been surviving. Even fucking Rue was like, I don't know how Vanity has made it this far. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you're the judge, bitch. Like, why didn't you get rid of her? Well, like, no, Rue's doing this like Scorpio thing that we do sometimes. It's like, you know, we like to pretend like we're a space case, but really it's like we know exactly what's happening. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, it's not cute. It's not cute. Mm-hmm. Fuck you, Scorpios. <laughs> it is Scorpio yeah, season two. <laughs> ah! So they, they lip sync to uh, something new by Girls Aloud. And in the end, guess which one wins? Both. <laughs> double winner. Yeah, double winner on top of this. Yeah. So basically everyone won this episode. Badges for everyone. I think Rue just doesn't give a fuck at this point. Like- yeah. She's like, damn, I was really counting on Victoria Scone to win this season, but that really Rue fucked my plans. Is showing up so she can stay in that Beverly Hills mansion. Girl, I don't blame you, but pretend yeah. harder. Yeah. <laughs> um, so let's go ahead and switch gears into uh, uh, We're Here. Before <gasps> yes. we get into the newest episode, though, I did want to we just kind of give Jamal time to talk about the Selma episode if he wants to. Oh, the Selma episode. I thought that that was very cool because, um, of course, like all the history with Dr. Martin Luther King and uh, Black Roots in America, um, it's it feels like 
you know, black people, we don't want to keep talking about this all the time because it's exhausting. So I'm happy to see like these things illuminated on prominent, you know, TV shows, especially in the queer space, because our community could especially use more communication surrounding black, brown and other issues. So um, I thought that this was a fabulous episode. I appreciated um, Bob's direct connection, you know, his family being down there. A lot of my ancestors and relatives came through Alabama and Mississippi as well. So I could definitely feel what Bob was connecting with. And the fight goes on. It's never over. It will be ongoing. And thank you, HBO. And we're here for that. Yeah, it's crazy, too, because you think like, oh, this is like something that happened in history. But there's like literally people still alive that were there. That's right. It's yeah. like it really wasn't that long ago, people. That's why we have to really hear people when these issues are happening across the country and the world. Definitely. And that's, that's the thing, too, is like everyone. There are certain people that want to just move on and be like, well, that was the past. Get it's over like, it. These bitches are still alive. Like, it's is not like... I don't it's not know. the past yet. <laughs> You're right. We're not that far removed from a lot of the bullshit. And honestly, yeah. a lot of the bullshit just happened in 2020 and continues to happen to this day. So. To this right. moment. It's yep. just like, I don't know. People are so annoying. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Definitely agree. So, um, yeah, I thought that Selma episode was very important and happy it happened. Yes, I so agree. All right, let's move on to this week's episode, which was in Evansville, Indiana, pretty close to you two. Oh, shit. Shout out to Indian. I N T I A N A. We were waiting for this episode, girl. <laughs> I, I, I literally recognize like every person from the show. I'm like, I've seen the, not, not them specifically, but I've seen people like these people. Oh yeah, this is that was totally like an IU chair that that's in Bloomington, by the way. But it's state Indiana, state of Indiana. But uh, we have family that live in Evansville. I didn't recognize any queers that I knew on the screen. But I mean, oh. thing is, Seth is right. <laughs> it was not shocking to me that like Bob was just like this place is something. Else. They love fireworks um, in Indiana. Flags on every block, girl. Yes, and I'm like, and, yeah, American flags on every block, especially for July Fourth. I like. Woo. <laughs> when she said that i was like thank you because like i just remember all the july forests i was there and saw all those damn flags yes and, yeah i mean there's a reason that people say indiana is the middle finger of the south because it's like literally the middle finger of the south because <laughs> <laughs> literally if you drew a picture it's the middle finger <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> made of corn and fucking i don't know sometimes despair any map of and like, humidity who voted for trump <laughs> in 20 20- 2020 ah. and it's the middle finger of the south <laughs> i also love how small a town it is that they couldn't even actually find anybody from evansville it was all like the little towns around it yes like Newburgh I, and santa claus yep yep we and clocked that too shout out to holiday world um stoney's old roommate that i don't like dragged us there on a cold overcast day and they put me on a water ride rude my attitude was not Jamal where it needed like to be yeah. water parks <laughs> <laughs> i mean i don't either so i get it and it was cold. Like, yeah. y'all, wait till the fucking sun comes up. Can we do this in but the shout summer? Out, shout out to Santa Claus, so <laughs> the I've summer. been there. Uh, let's, let's, <laughs> let's not revisit this. It's very, like, uh, traumatizing. Okay, okay, okay. Let's, let's move on. So... <laughs> <laughs> it's like jamal exploded <laughs> yeah let's move on okay so let's start with um let's start with craig who is a i thought he was gay but apparently not he is a pastor that supports his pansexual daughter oh yeah i didn't think he was gay i definitely got like he did maybe like some acid and a lot of weed back in his day well you know you have like the one earring thing yeah. I don't know. That just to me, and he seemed a little bit more flamboyant. Flower child, I free mean, love. It, yeah. He might be gay. I don't know, but he definitely is trying to be a cool mom. Yeah, he is the cool mom for sure. <laughs> Stoney's yeah. right. I don't know. I think that's really cool, though. He will actually stand up for like um, our community in the church. So, like, willing to even risk like losing everything to do the show. I yeah That's I agree scary. with that. I thought it was super good. Like it was really good for him. And like even at the end where he's like you know telling like everyone like basically like you can ha- you know you can still worship and like be 
There's um, a God that loves you. Yeah, basically. Definitely. And he actually did really good in his performance because usually the old white men are like kind of like and box step two three and you know it's very like robotic and not fluid but oh yeah yeah he did a great job in his performance oh yeah i so agree like and they they had that solo moment on the stage before anyone joined them and they were totally owning it and like if you've never i mean they talk in front of people weekly daily probably but it's different when you're up there like performing doing something new and they felt so comfortable yeah and I thought that that was kind of awesome to see just how people transform when they put on that armor, that drag armor. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So that was cool. Also, there was a lot of people at the performance. Like, it was in a whole ass theater. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A mask up, but it was a, like, it looked like an auditorium or like a big performance space. Yeah. For, for as hateful as Indiana can be, there is a big queer population there. Oh, we're down there. We just put up with a bunch of bullshit. I feel like there's a lot of like in Indiana, it's just like a lot of like closeted yep. people oh, yeah. because it's just like hard, like growing oh, up yeah. in Southern Indiana, like it's like not accepted. So like people just have to like, if you stay in that area, you kind of have to adapt mm-hmm. and be like passing as straight when you're in public. Well, I mean, oh, yeah. to, to your point, you know, um, the lesbian couple kind of goes against that grain because you are kind of expected to assimilate and keep your shit to yourself and that's just rude you know because straights can go out here and you know fling their shit in the air and in your face and it's fine because it's tradition yeah they can make out with their cousins and get each other pregnant down there yeah stoney's absolutely right because like the contrast between these people that kind of are forced to kind of stay they might be out but you're kind of still like in the closet in a sense and this lesbian couple is like so civil rights. One of them's been arrested nine times. It shows like the contrast. Like we have good people oh, yeah. in the state, but unfortunately it's just like drowned out by a lot of stupidity and ignorance, willful ignorance, <laughs> mind you. Yeah. So um, Evansville would be a great place to start. It's three hours plus south from Indy, if that gives you some perspective. So it's the South, honey. Yeah, we're in the deep south. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, scroll. it legit is. Like, people have Kentucky accents, like, southern accents. Like, I mean, they're oh, yeah. just right across, you know, the Kentucky border, so. Yeah. Uh, well, speaking of this uh, beautiful lesbian couple, we have Barbara and Yvonne, who actually got married on the show. So cool. And Bob, <laughs> just out here working, marrying the children. I yeah. fucking love them. They're so, like, they were so awesome. And, like, I you could know. tell they were just so excited to be on the show. I thought but, it was yeah. so cute. Stoney was like, he'd watched um, a couple of the drag shows without me, and he rewatched, and he was like, oh my God, you're going to love this couple. You're going to love <laughs> yeah. them. Wait for their transformation. And he was, he was right. I liked them a lot. Like, I could totally see, like, being friends with that couple. Like, if I lived yeah. down there, easily. Absolutely. Yes. Older, older le- lesbian women are like some of the best people. Like they're just like really funny and really caring. And I don't know. I just like they just don't do a lot of the bullshit that the gays do. <laughs> I mean, thank God. Lesbians There's just get shit done. Like I don't know. I'm all about like them. Just like yeah. they don't have they don't deal with the bullshit. They're just like we're going to like fucking like make the world a better place, and that's what right. they do it. They're like sapping a sissy. (laughs) Gay men are just out here like going to COVID parties and like doing whatever to like each other through holes. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Lesbians, they're not doing that. No. (laughs) Um, We're not kink or sex shaming. We're just uh, making observations. Yeah. As it pertains to the show. Yes. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Allegedly. (laughs) Yeah. Kink is art. (laughs) <laughs> and art is subjective <laughs> so we're just gonna judge your art as it relates to the show <laughs> so um yeah girl i don't know but yeah i love them and i like that they were hippies yes like, especially yes. um i think uh barbara was she the one with the white the long white hair was that yvonne was that Yvonne with the white know. hair? I don't know their oh names. Oh my God. I hope it they was because she together. was spicy. She the would thing, have been my ace. Yeah. So the one with the, the she was ready to white fight. hair, the transformation. Yeah. 
the transformation that she had <laughs> when they put like her in drag was amazing. She looked oh, like yeah. Willem. Like, did oh you notice know that? Like, she looked like fucking Willem on stage. Stoney said that shit, and I <laughs> fell out because I immediately saw Willem in that outfit. And I was like, See? oh, my God, relatives. <laughs> See, I felt bad because my, like, mind went to a completely bad place as far as references for this, their outfits for their performance. Oh, shit. Spill it, bitch. I you went have to, to share. I went to Dumb and Dumber because they have the same colored suits. <laughs> Oh no! As Dumb and Dumber, and I think they even had top hats in that movie too. <laughs> oh, see, I didn't think of that, but well, they glammed it up. Maybe, maybe it was a touch point. I, thought, I don't know. I thought though that their performance was very Something cute. Insecure. Like I love that. Oh yeah, they did that song, and it was just like, and they got everyone involved. Like that was a part of like the makeup team and oh, all yeah. that. Yeah. So like, I don't know. I just thought it was one of the cutest performances, and like I this cried season, during their wedding. Yeah, this season is so fucking good. See, I didn't cry this one, but I had so much fun. Like, I feel like I was smiling the whole time when I was watching. And that made me feel good. Yeah, I cried um, when the pastor gave his little talk at the end. And then I cried when they got the two women got married. And then I basically just cried the whole time that like Case performed because, um, Mm -hmm. you know, he was just very much it, it appeared he was very much being himself. Yeah, very much so. And just being all alone. And like, for us, we're like, you came to Evansville, bitch? Like, yeah, but, wrong you know, spot, girl. <laughs> they don't know. Like, it was literally life or death. Like, he just has to go. They yeah. gotta go. Well, Evan, or um, not, not even Evansville, just I feel like Indiana is very multicultural for a state that does not, that's not it very is. accepting. It is. And it's like in the cities. Like, the that's cities. the thing. You go outside the city in Indiana, you're yes. basically in the South. Yes. Yeah. Um, but to talk about Case, um, Case is a homosexual Muslim fellow who escaped Tunisia when his family found out that he was gay. It sounds like mostly his mom was like, you need to get out. Like, just because yeah, she wanted it, she didn't want anything bad for him. The brother found out because he noticed some shit in the search history, which is just like, ah, so typical. Like, leave it to the nosy fucking straights to ruin the party. Sorry, allies, but you get your cousins. (laughs) (laughs) But, um, yeah, no, I thought Casey's story was very inspiring. And um, I like, you know, I kind of like didn't didn't think about what it would be like. I, I think I got more insight as to what it would be like being an immigrant in another country because mm-hmm. for a case, he was like, you know, I just want to be with my family and see my country, but I can't because like I could get killed there. Right. If I want to be alive, I can, you know, never see my family or friends again. Right. It's, it's just crazy to think like every day you're like, Oh, like one day I'm going to be able to go back, but you know, you really can't. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's terrible. super sad. It makes you realize like how lucky we are to be in a country where at least like it's not like at that level, <laughs> right? Yeah, um, it's like yeah, not the absolutely. best here, but it's you're not going to get killed. It, it, yeah, it could be law. way worse. Yeah, yeah, yep, it could be way worse, and that's what we mean. Like when we target like white gays, sometimes it's like we have to look at the bigger picture. Like even going into our queer history in this country, like the privilege that's just shown like yeah it's not to make you feel bad i don't know how many times we've seen this it's just what <laughs> happened yeah. so like when we look at these people coming over and you know literally like running away from death like it's just Cleaning a matter asylum. of like their their plane ticket you know if they leave too late they might not make that flight you know right. it's yeah. it's so scary things we don't have to worry about so it's like just reconsider and i'm so like happy that of all places indiana because i live here and i kind of see plenty of queer culture but i kind of see like what stoney's saying it's a mixed bag oh yeah (laughs) as far as like who's receptive who's open to it yeah so um we need that message and i'm glad it was on this platform definitely yeah i thought um yeah i don't know i just thought it was cool to see especially like how far he you know cases come like he has you know a stable living space you know um and, and it's uh, nice that even though he was ostracized by his own like culture that he still does worship i don't know mm-hmm. i thought that was interesting you know it's powerful because i feel like that you know while i'm not a religious person i think that people who are queer and religious when they are kicked out of their um, houses of worship and their families 
it's powerful to keep it up because it proves, you know, what all of our good books say, you know, we don't think your God, whoever you pray to or worship would create a person this way. Um, like, unless you go full blown gay Republican. Do you really believe like <laughs> all this other shit, but like, you know, you pick and choose. It just highlights all the hypocrisy sometimes. Yeah. So, you know, stop it. If you're one of those. <laughs> yeah. We those hate it people. here. We don't like fake faith influencers right uh, <laughs> but i don't know case was was a little cutie and um so cute i was kind of sad when they shaved his face i was like oh uh, that beard was everything I'm yeah a sucker for a beard so i need to shave his too yeah i like that with the with the beard was better but you know <laughs> if anybody if you guys see case like around uh evansville just let him know about me or something maybe i don't know whatever Ooh, happened whatever feels natural him- Shoot him a message from yeah. um, TFC Seth. <laughs> but uh, anyways, to his performance, um, he was very traditionally dressed to start and had, um, you know, on a, 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 the burqa. Is that what it's called? Am I... I don't want to mess it up. Yeah, I'll I'm ask probably Uglisha. being yeah. traditional, traditional, like um, to their heritage. Yeah. I thought it was cool that like, you know, it was very much like, you know, since he was in drag portraying you know the female illusion that he was yeah. very covered egyptian yeah yeah the egyptian illusion it was so like or the T- tunisian excuse me um illusion just that part of africa like the colors yeah. that came into play and like the long dark hair um, of course hbo and the whole we're here team very thoughtful to the details oh, yeah. very thoughtful and i like that um you know you do the the ripping away of like the face piece and then so you mm-hmm. can like so it's sort of like breaking the bonds of like the culture and that's like a double, you know, because the ladies, you know, may or may not, depending on where they are. I, I don't live in Africa. I've never been. I've never been to Tunisia. But, you know, <laughs> people tra- traditionally the ladies have their faces and hair covered. So like what Seth just said, that ripping away, it's kind of like a double whammy because he's like in drag. They're like, yeah. oh, is this a woman? You know, the start of the episode. <laughs> is you a woman? Leave it to a fucking old Negro. Like, are you, is you a man? <laughs> Well, what's going on here? <laughs> Yo, what the fuck is going on oh here? Oh my gosh. And I had to laugh because I'm like, this is at least like two of my uncles. This is like at Uh-oh. least two of them. But, um, you know, it was important. So important. Yeah, I, I loved it. And I thought it was very cool that he did like a, um, a Middle Eastern, uh, like, a, I don't know if it's specifically a Tunisian song, but, um, but so, a song in which they speak Arabic. So I thought that was really cool. And then I went as soon as it like you hit into the translation into the transition to aura. I will have to apologize to my neighbors because I <laughs> yelled a bit. <laughs> I was we like, stand Gaga, uh, you know. Uh, aura. We, we did the same thing, bitch. We used to like sing that song like as a joke <laughs> on the episode <laughs> on, on, on the pod, I should say. <laughs> yeah, and on the way to Pride. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, that's that's definitely like an important song for the podcast. But it is. Oh my god, I was living for that performance. Ah, I don't know. It was really good, and I also I really liked Eureka's solo performance at the beginning. Oh yeah, Eureka's like she is a performance giant like they all do really well when they do like their um performance um scenes or their opening scenes at the main show but she um she really came through with this one she loves a high kick you know eureka loves to show off those shoes and those toes she's got to make sure you see him but um i i'd love to watch her she's amazing on stage yeah that was a beautiful performance so all around great episode this week yeah have i forgotten anything is there anything else we should bring up oh i guess we didn't do the fantasy league for uk did we let's do the fantasy league round the show out yeah so this will be quick um i'm in last place with 65 points and we'll no longer get any points Um. because my people are gone (laughs) (laughs) surprise Uh, um jamal's in second place with 255 points and seth is in first place with 335 points oh gosh yes. okay come on kitty and just to recap and like, i guess i should recap who's on whose team yeah um so we have just a second we have el of a day so seth has el of a day crystal versace and jamal has 
Kitty Scott Claus and um, Vanity Mulan. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's Mulan, not Mulan. That's a different (laughs) thing. Mulan, sorry. (laughs) Um, So, yeah. So, it'll be interesting to see who wins. I know. I'm like, Vanity's been... come back? uh, I don't know. Vanity's been hanging on, but we'll see. We'll see. girl. She's got to kick it up if she's going to stick around. Not going to lie. I think you have a better bet with uh, Kitty to win. Yes. Yeah. All right, you all. I feel like we've accomplished everything in this podcast this week. So we'll, uh, of course, you know, be back next week with uh, some more content and drag updates for you. But until then, bye, flop. (laughs) Bye. Bye. (laughs)